Hello and welcome to this special conversation. If there's one group that has captivated the market's imagination and fancy over the last one year, it's probably the Mahindra Group. m and stock price has made it one of the best performing stocks on the Nifty in the last 12 months. The company has held the first of its kind investor day in its history where it's interacting with over 300 investors. And one can understand why, because the excitement and uh, the anticipation around the group is really palpable. Well, the CNBC TV18 team is here to talk with the top brass at m and to understand what the strategy ahead is going to be for all of the flagship businesses of the group, as well as the companies that m and calls its gem portfolio. Well, well, we have with us the, the first set of the top leaders of uh, Mahindra and Mahindra. Uh, we have with us Dr. Shah, who is the group CEO and MD. We have uh, Mr. Barua, who is the group CFO. And of course, Rajesh Yajurikar, who is, of course, uh, you know, a known favorite on the channel as well, who is going to tell us more about the strategy for the auto and the farm equipment sector. Gentlemen, thank you so much for taking out the time. I know it's, it's a hectic, busy day for you, 300 investors. But uh, Dr. Shah, let me start with you. And I want to start with the big picture, because clearly since you came over, a lot changed. I remember, I mean, Nimesh and I and all, all of us, we remember the era where Sangyong happened, a lot of different sort of acquisitions happened, and then there was a refocus, there was a change in strategy, a shift away from the old erstwhile loss-making businesses, or the, the bets were not, which were not strategic, and a focus on where value can be generated. So that stage has happened. What next for the group? So, Ruby, I want to first start by saying that growth and returns has been in our DNA. So if we look at Mahindra Group going back to 2002, we were in fact the fastest and the best performing stock in the Nifty for 17 years, from 2002 to August 2018. We have now reclaimed that position, but it's been something that the group has been used to doing for a long time. Yes, there were some lessons along the way. We fixed those, but for us, it's about continuity and change. The road ahead is more of the same. Keep our head down, focus, execute well, and grow our businesses. Mm -hmm. Anish, uh, you know the big uh, difference after you coming in in 2015-16 and until now, uh, I think what market has appreciated is the capital allocation and you've been talking about it in every uh, every forum that that's going to be the key focus. Uh, we've seen that uh, over a period of last three, four years that that's been the key mantra for you. Is that going to continue? And from that perspective, how do you justify uh, you know buying a small stake in Arabil Bank? So capital allocation for us is about strong execution is delivering on what we commit. If we acquire something and we forecast 20% returns, we should deliver 21%. Uh, it's not just about exiting businesses. That's the easy part. Actually, it's not that easy, but that <laughs> is one that is easier than delivering on commitments. And RBL Bank was, in many ways, a treasury investment with a strategic option. It is a 400 crore investment in a sector where we've got 40,000 crores at stake. For the benefit of viewers, 4,400 crores in the auto business, over 6,300 crores in the farm business, and almost 7,000 crores in the services business. What's the plan? And, and again, uh, more numbers here. I know you're looking to invest, I think, 27,000 crores in the, uh, in the farm and the automotive sector over the next three years. 12,000 crores in EV. Let me not bore viewers with more numbers. But that's, uh, that's serious uh, you know, money commitment as well. So just tell us what the, the key growth focus areas are going to be. So we've got three areas of growth. First is auto and farm, where we're going to capitalize on market leadership. Uh, both businesses have significant growth drivers. And in fact, our investors appreciated that a lot today. In fact, many came up and said, we didn't realize the level of growth drivers you have even for the farm business, while auto is more well recognized. Second is unlocking full potential in Tech Mahindra and Mahindra Finance. Both are businesses that are very strong franchises. Uh, both have had some struggles in the recent past and have underperformed their peers. Uh, but the lessons from there have put significant plans for growth over the next few years. Mind of Finance is well on the path to turnaround. Tekem with Mohit Joshi coming in has just commenced its turnaround. And uh, both are businesses that I think are, are going to be very good for the investor and, and obviously for the group. And then the third is our growth gems. This is a set of 10 businesses. All of them have great potential. Uh, we have increased the valuation of growth gems over the last four years uh, by 5x, from roughly 0 0.8, 0 0.9 billion to about 4.2 billion at the end of uh, the last fiscal year. And uh, these are therefore the three growth drivers for us. So we'll speak about the gem companies with, in the next set. But you know, uh, Jujurikar, uh, coming to you, because you spoke about farm 
and the auto as a, as a big growth driver. Uh, how are you taking this vision forward and what are the key things that you will be focusing on in terms of execution next year? Yes, yeah, so I'll try and uh, invest. Thanks for the question and thanks for being here with us today. Uh, on the farm equipment side, you know, one qu question which has been on a lot of people's mind is has the tractor market saturated? And you know, that question tends to kind of come with the heated intensity when there's a one time, one year down cycle. Uh, and we know that this industry is, you know, is cyclical and yeah, and you, you know, we, that's, doesn't take away from the fact that in the last 15 years it has had a CAGR of about 7% plus. But what we did put out today, and I, I guess you've seen that data, is there are several growth drivers for the tractor market here. We are very far from saturation, and we would expect to see you know, the industry grow at a faster rate as we go forward because fundamentally to meet the food needs of India, uh, the farm productivity has to improve and it's not going to improve without greater level of mechanization, as, especially because there's much more intercrop inter uh, cultivation going on. There is a, a decreasing labor force availability. So there are several enabling factors to mechanization. And hence, uh, it is an imperative of the government to get a greater level of mechanization to meet the food needs of the country. So that's one key driver. Uh, the second one is around, you know, opportunity in global markets, and we will recently launch the OJA, which is actually four platforms, as th th you know, three are ready, one is under work, which allows us to get into new markets, but also strengthens our position in some of the big markets we are in, like North America and so on. So, I, I, you know, just in summary, these are two big growth drivers. On the auto side, uh, you know, we everybody wants to listen about the new launches and what more excitement there is yeah, that you're going to bring yeah, to the market. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we can talk a, about that. It's a, it's a very <laughs> uh, sort of heavy pipeline as well, right? I think nine ICEs, uh, say, uh, SUVs, you're looking at, of course, the Bond Electric portfolio, expanding that as well. So lots of launches lined up. Tell us a little more also on, on, the, on the EV side where you're putting 12,000 crores to work over the next three years. Yeah, so uh, let me quickly, you know, take on the ICE portfolio first and then we'll talk about electric as kind of two different levers. So, on the, uh, so when we actually had a slide, you would have seen that on market mapping. And there's one part of the market where, which is 50% of the industry, where our overall volume market share is 18 and a half or so, and we are number two by volume, number one by revenue market share. But in 50% of the market, our volume market share is 13%. Uh, so we have a big opportunity to gain share there and products which we've recently launched the 3XO allows us to do that. Uh, you know, so, so there is, there is, uh, we are number five in that segment in the of, compact. in the segment. compact segment uh, by way of rank. So, you know, and we think we really have a strong proposition with 3XO which can make us number one or number two or three years. So there's a lot we can do in ICE, many new products, some uh, refreshes, uh, or mid-cycle enhancements as we call them, some completely new products. So, and we want to stay invested in ICE because at least 70% of the market three years from now will be ICE. Uh, the Bonn Electric portfolio, which we we'll launch in 2025, is actually about a lifestyle experience, and uh, uh, you know we are looking we are looking less at here's an EV option. It's more about here is a emotionally charged uh, new SUV, which is superly designed, tech driven, fun to drive. And you know it's the kind of thing you should want to buy with a lot of emotions. Emotionally and there are some, charged, yeah. That's yeah. Nice and and there's it. there's a there's a very very strong rational reason as the well. The challenge is you know there is a lot of waiting period to buy your uh, your car. So yeah, it takes you know almost eight eight my, eight months nine months or almost a year now to. To get into we are very focused on trying to bring that down, Great. and uh, <laughs> we have done that, quite a bit of that in the recent past. Yeah, we, we have triple capacity, which has helped get those waiting times down significantly. So, so let me ask you one more thing, because you folks have done phenomenally well on the SUV side, right? Pretty much the, the flag bearers and everybody else entered. And you know, interestingly, we're talking at a time where we might be seeing one of your peer companies, global peers, come out with a listing as well. So big times for the sector. Uh, how confident are you about maintaining this rate of growth? I know you're guiding on SUVs. I think you're guiding for mid to high teens growth in, in this year, FI25. But how competitive is the market and how confident are you of maintaining your position? Uh, the market is competitive yep. because now 60% of the passenger vehicle industry is SUV. So it's, exactly. it is the main industry. It's no longer the thing that you did on the side. Yeah. Uh, so we, it is the mainstay of the industry. And uh, which is why we feel good about the fact that even though we have the highest average price point, we are number two by way of volume. So we're doing more than 40,000 vehicles with the highest average price, uh, and which is what makes us number one by revenue market share. And I think that's a reflection of the very strong product portfolio we have. 
uh, and many people who bought our products, the new products in the last three, four years, are actually creating that uh, set of, you know, positive word of mouth or enablement. You know, as we were talking in the corridor right now, when three people say, oh, you know, we drove this product of yours, it's so, wow, it gets three more people to say, let me also have it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Baba, uh, you are in the hot seat now, you know, they all spoke about the kind of investment they're going to do. Uh, you being a CFO, how are you managing the entire cash flow for the groups? And which are the key areas where you think there's going to be major investments over the next couple of years? Uh, so, first of all, I just want to say that, uh, you know, Anish has made my life easy as a CFO because he has set a very uh, stringent requirements for how we deploy capital. So I think that part has, done, has, uh, has got a lot of discipline. What I have to ensure, though, is after we put in the capital, we actually realize the returns, right? So there is a lot of rhythms that we run internally that the CFO office has to enable. Um, so that's one, one thing that I just wanted to highlight. In terms of where we are going to deploy capital, you already heard uh, some of the areas. We've also today talked about one new area that we have uh, been looking at for a while. Um, in fact, you know, uh, we probably get 10 opportunities a month, and we have looked at them in depth and, and basically said it doesn't meet our two very stringent criteria. Right? It has to be meaningful. We have to have a clear right of win. Um, uh, and and uh, that's kind of a big part of what my job is.